This is one of sport's great proving grounds, a gateway to glory where heroes are made. Brilliant. Absolutely first class. 29 tournaments spanning 17 countries. It's a 10-month campaign to determine the very brightest prospects in golf. He hasn't, has he? he hasn't, has he? Oh, my goodness. What a way to do it. Along the way, a chance for the class of 2023 to expand horizons Enjoy. and sample life on tour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Finish the season in the top 20 on the road to Mallorca rankings and secure a golden ticket to the DP World Tour. That's the dream shared by all who compete on the Challenge Tour. And so begins the 2023 season. A new dawn and new opportunity for those hoping to achieve greatness. The first step on what may yet prove a life-changing journey. But to where? Ten months from now, dreams will become realized in the season-ending grand final in Mallorca, with the top 20 rewarded priceless DP World Tour tickets. Our promotion campaign, though, begins far from Spanish soil over 5,000 miles away in stunning Cape Town, South Africa. Backdrop to our season opener is Royal Cape Golf Club, host to the fourth edition of the Baines Whiskey Cape Town Open, and the welcome is most certainly warm. Among this week's hopefuls, ambitious young talent and experienced heads alike, all sharing the same graduation goal. Started off Q School in Manchester um, at Mottram Hall. That was the start of October. Eagled the last to get through. And then second stage, I was at last Kalinas. I think I came about 10th. And then final stage of Q School. It ended up being a good week. It was uh, pretty good to be the only amateur to make the cut. You just got to look forward now, try and be able to compete week in, week out on the Challenge Tour. Over the past few years when I've been on the main tour and you, you kind of see the guys coming up every season, you can see that hunger, you can see that drive, and you can see that ambition in their eyes. It feels like a lifetime ago already. I think it was 2015 when I managed to come out on top. I kind of felt like I was kind of caught in the grey last season a little bit and there's definitely that structure that I'm trying to achieve everything with every golf show, which I haven't had for a few months, so it makes me very excited. It's been a really difficult few years for me. It's not just like the golf, it's mentally it's been very, very tough. But I'm really determined this year. It's always a little bit strange, your first event of the year. You never quite know how you are and how you've come out of your winter's work or whatever you've been doing. So, yeah, it's more sort of a case of getting some reps and then a couple of weeks more down here and, and progress. Over my experience for the better part of a decade now, every guy that's come from the Challenge Tour has had that drive, had that ambition, and had that hunger to compete with the best golfers in the world. And it all starts again this year, but this year it starts in quite a beautiful location. Sentiment shared by everyone setting out on this special golfing mission. And so, with hopes high and practice done, the field made ready to launch the new campaign. Play got underway at 6.45 a.m. on Thursday, with Kit Alexander watching. Dan O'Loughlin, the man who is hitting the first tee shot of the 2023 Challenge Tour season. Chris Wood, an experienced campaigner, 2016 Ryder Cup player. This is his approach into the third. Oh, go on. It's an absolute doozy. Lean times over the last few years for him. Likely to see a full schedule on the Challenge Tour from the Englishman this season. Stone, Brandon Stone, another man recognisable as a DP World Tour winner. Playing alongside Wood in these opening couple of rounds. And just about matching his playing partner there with that peach. Experienced South African Yako Van Zael. Three under par, going for the par 5, 11th in two. Pin at the front here. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. He's got that to land so softly. Brandon Stone, 
cruising along at three under par. Go in. Oh, well, I think we can give him that. He will move to four under. Left-hander, Dylan Mostert, to get to five under. That's excellent, really kicking on in this second round after a 71 on Thursday. People have gone for this 12th all week. Oh, he's showing there's more than one way to make a birdie there. Brilliant from Stefan Weir's Taylor. Van Zale came into this week, four missed cuts at the back end of 2022. He was desperate for some form. And my word, he has found it here in Cape Town. So to move to nine under par, already a 15-time Sunshine Tour winner. And that is excellent work from Jaco Van Zale. And a kiss for wife and caddy, Stacey. So at the midway mark, Jaco Van Zale leading the season opener here in Cape Town. The familiar cosmopolitan blend of nationalities among the remaining top ten. A bright start then for some of our 2023 hopefuls as they set their sights on the season-ending grand final in Mallorca. All looking to follow in the footsteps of the reigning Challenge Tour champion. First uh, goal was top 20 and um, knowing that you're probably going to need a win to obviously have a good shot at that and not having won before on Challenge Tour, secondary goal was to obviously uh, get my first win out here as well. Nathan Kimsey is a winner on the Challenge Tour. You know, I hold my part and I think like looking back and I can't remember it, but obviously looking back at the video, obviously it gave it a bit of a fist pump. It kind of gives you a bit of confidence to go up there and think, oh, okay, I've been in this situation before and I've got it done. So you sort of can kind of crack on and just keep pushing. There was a few people that were kind of coming to me and go, oh, does, does that win guarantee you your card? Or, you know, you, you're basically there now. And I'm, you know, I kept saying to myself, no, nope, it's not done yet, it's not done yet, it's not done yet. So I just sort of kept kind of pushing really to go and try and finish off a, a great year with a great week and, um, and get a win. He gets the victory here, he gets the rankings title. It's just a whole mix of stuff. Uh, yeah, just relief, like happiness, just everything. Just feels great. Congrats, you can't say enough uh, for the platform it provides and the opportunity to go and get your card for the DP tour. I can't believe it. I can't that, uh, it's oh, mate. Hell of a year. Obviously, just grab that trophy and um, take the one spot is just just awesome. Come on, Nathan, Come on, Nathan lift it up. Woo! Yes, Nathan Kimsey joins an illustrious list of Challenge Tour graduates on the DP World Tour. And hoping to follow in Kimsey's footsteps, the class of 2023 readied themselves for weekend golf. Guiding us through the action, Kit Alexander. Darren Fickart taking advantage of unusually still conditions today. Already five birdies and an eagle on the card. And it's getting better and better for the experienced South African. Tearing his way up the field. This to move to 11 under par. Never anywhere else for the 47-year-old. O'Loughlin, the man who hit the first tee shot of the week to move to 13 under. That is a lovely putting stroke. And a 24-year-old Englishman right in contention here. Fickart for a 62. That's a magnificent round of 10 under par. He ties the course record, but it will be unofficial for him as they have played clean and placed today. Let's look at the Zimbabwe and Follett Smith. That's a very tidy little chip there. Dylan Moster, eagle putt here. He's driven the green. 
Oh, and he jumps to 11 under par as well. Things are really heating up. Brilliant scoring conditions and the players raising their games to it. Follett Smith to move to 12 under. He won here in 2019. It's been a really lean period for him since then. Van Zale, greenside bunker here. Oh, he had so little space to work with. Had to take the risk of landing it in the rough, but judged it very nicely. This is Follett Smith to tie Fickart in the lead. Oh, using every millimetre of the hole, but it does die in on the right-hand side. Van Zayl to stay within touching distance and pick up another birdie. Beautifully done. So they are stacking up at the top of the leaderboard here in Cape Town. Follett Smith just putting from the fringe here, wants to get a smooth roll on this. Seems to come off very nicely. Just half a foot shy of pace. So a missed opportunity for the Zimbabwean to take the outright lead. So Benjamin followed Smith, having to settle for a share of top spot heading into Sunday. Manuel Elvira joining Jaco Van Zale in fourth and a cluster of contenders ready to pounce. I like this course and you don't need to do much. You just need to put it well and have some short game. Usually that's where I'm strong. So yeah, I've got kind of no stresses, as I would say. I don't know what tomorrow is going to be like, but let's just hope it's the same. Coming up. Hugo Cousseau's aiming high. It's amazing. Table Mountains, Lion's Head, it was very cool, and I think I will do it again, yeah. And we'll see who comes out on top at the season opening Baines Whiskey Cape Town Open. Welcome back to the Challenge Tour and to South Africa, where the curtain-raising Baines Whiskey Cape Town Open has got our 10-month campaign underway. A season that will see the Challenge Tour visit no less than 17 countries in all. Among those looking to make his mark in 2023, Hugo Cousseau, a Frenchman who knows well the highs and lows of life on tour. I feel like the last season just up last week. Uh, the break was short, but wasn't very nice and very much needed. And I feel all right and a lot of good targets to go with this year, so just can't wait to start. I've come here for like four years now, my fourth year, and I just love it. It's good for golf, it's good for food, it's good for the beach, it's good for everything. A lot of activities to do, so I love to come here, yeah. How are you? Hi, Hugo. Welcome. Welcome to Cape Town. Thank you very much. You ready to go paragliding? Yeah, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Awesome. Let's do it. It's not my first experience in, uh, like, it's not extreme, but kind of going out, flying. I did some skydiving and I didn't like it, so I, but I said I did it, so now I won't do it again. But first time for that one, so kind of exciting to see. Basically, we're going to run off the mountain. There's a paraglider just going off now. We're going to run a few steps off to get the speed we need to fly. It's really, really easy. Once we're up in the air, you're going to be sitting comfortably. We can chat. Okay. You might even have a go flying the glider if you want. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> then we're going to be landing on the nice grassy strip there in Sea Point. We're going to have a cold beer at the Winchester Mansions afterwards. Oh, perfect. I love it. Safety first with paragliding. OK. I trust the instructor. <laughs> I was relaxed, I was tired, so I just took a short nap and it was perfect. It didn't wait too long then. You go, you're having a nice little sleep there. Cape Town is one of the best. Cape Town, George, that's maybe, those are the two first weeks, but maybe the best of the year, so it's a strong start for us here. Okay, so then if you're ready, you're ready to go. Oh. That was good.
It was perfect over the mountain, then we went over the, the city and I felt like I'm way too high over there. I don't feel comfortable. But for the view, for everything, it was a very good experience. I just felt comfortable and we just kept talking during the flight, so that was very cool. So basically, we're just using the wind, we're just pushing up the mountain. It's strong enough to push us up. It's amazing. The table mountains, lion's head, the, the island over there, all the, the big boat, the sea, the city, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Because I always look at the map or Google map or whatever, and now I, I mean, I really know how it likes and, uh, and I can see the beach. So, yeah, it's, it's getting better in my head, yeah. It was very cool and more like a walk. Or it's, it's not extreme at all, it's very nice. So, yeah, I think I will do it again, yeah. Yeah, that was great, man. Oh, it was just a nice view and I enjoyed my time in Cape Town. That was so good, beautiful, beautiful up there. Love it. I never won on the Challenge Tour yet, and I think like this year it's going to be a good year to, to start winning, and uh, I miss it to be honest. So, so yeah, I'm going to use that experience to try to get as much as win as I can and good position, yeah. Okay, Hugo, it was a pleasure flying with you. I hope you had a good time. Yeah, happy we, we make it to the grass. <laughs> See you next time. Yeah. Thank you. And hopefully, there'll be many more highs in store on the golf course for Ugo Cousseau this year. Meanwhile, as dawn breaks over Royal Cape Golf Club, all eyes back to the main event and a potentially thrilling final day's competition here in sunny Cape Town. The lead tied by Benjamin Follett Smith and Darren Fickhart through 54 holes, remember. Dylan Mostert is just a shot off the pace, with plenty of others jostling for position too. Martin Forster birdied the first today and a bit of trouble here on the second though. Hoisting that high into the air with a wedge. Oh, that's a superb recovery from trouble to a good look for back-to-back -back birdies for Vorster. Jaco van Zeil has chosen to lay up here on the par five fifth. Relying on the wedges. Oh, and they don't disappoint. Wonderful bit of spin control. Now, can Vorster turn that wonderful approach into back-to-back -back birdies? Oh, of course he can. Showing a nice bit of form. Couple of top sixes in his last four starts of last year, Vorster. This is first start of 2023. Now, Van Zale to move to 13 under. It's been an interesting start for him, a bit of a roller coaster. Three birdies and two bogeys in his first five holes, but he is under the card for the day. Now Follett Smith for a birdie as well. And he also takes advantage of the par five. One here back in 2019. It's been a bit of a barren run ever since. Only got his first top 10 since that win in his last start of last year on the Asian Development Tour. Eagle try for Fick up. This is tough, up over that little ridge there. And that is a safe lag for the 47-year-old. And just tidies that one up nicely for the birdie. Well, Alvira to move to 15 under par. Good stuff. Fist pump from the man who finished 56th on the road to Mallorca last season, making a far start to the season here in South Africa. Now, Benjamin Rush, five under for the day. taking advantage of the final par five to give himself a great chance to get to six under for the day. Brilliant crowds here at Royal Cape. Mollett Smith, the Zimbabwe, and delicate little chip here from just short of the par five. Just enough grab. Oh, that had a little look on the way past. Rush to move to 13 under. And he does a great surge through the field. 
on this final day for the man who was the last into the field of 45 in the grand final last season. Paul Smith just tidying up here. We'd have given him this one, haven't we, really? And in it goes. Good bounce back from a dropped shot on the 10th. Hugo Cuso, short putt left for par to post 14 under in the clubhouse. That's exactly what he does. Frenchman hang paragliding with us earlier this week and he's been flying high ever since, as has this man, but a bogey at 17. Means Van Zael needs a birdie here at 18. And he's got just enough grab there, held onto the back of the green. So this has to go in for Van Zael to tie Cousseau's clubhouse lead. Oh, brilliant from the South African and the home fans love it. So a little bit of pressure then on Follett Smith with a one-shot lead playing 18. This for the birdie to finish it in style. Well, you know what they say, if you've got two putts for it, take them. No need to do anything silly, and Benjamin Follett-Smith taps in for his first Challenge Tour victory. Messrs Van Zael and Cousseau off to a positive campaign start then, while a trio of nationalities shared fourth spot. Brandon Stone took a share of seventh, but it was Zimbabwe's Follett-Smith who prevailed. Ladies and gentlemen, our champion, Benjamin Pollitt-Smith. I think probably the drive to George, uh, probably start thinking about everything that's happened. I mean, just very grateful to be the winner this week and I think anyone would be, so hard work's paid off and I'm glad to be here. And so, with the season now underway, we can take an early glimpse at the road to Mallorca rankings. Leading the way, albeit at this very early stage, it's Benjamin Follett Smith, and the top 10 reflecting those who conquered Royal Cape Golf Club this week. A pleasing start for all these players, laying down an early marker for the long campaign to come. Remember, though, only the top 20 will graduate come the season's end to earn their place at the DP World Tour top table. But, of course, there'll be many more twists and turns before then. And so our time in Cape Town draws to a close. An impressive first step on what's sure to be an action-packed journey for our 2023 Challenge Tour contenders. They won't have far to go for our next leg. We head to Fancourt Estate in George for another instalment of the Dimension Data Pro-Am. So join us next week as the battle for promotion to the DP World Tour continues.